So let's have a look at the asymptotic growth of the log of n factorial. Now it doesn't matter which log we use, but we may as well use log to the base e because it makes the calculus simpler. It's only going to be a constant factor different if we used a different base. So the key thing we need to notice here is that the log of n factorial is the log of the product of n numbers. On the other hand, log works by converting multiplication to addition. So we just have the sum of the log of the first n positive integers. How are we going to estimate the growth rate of that? It's the sum of n terms, but they vary quite a bit in size. This one is 0, and this one is log n, which is going to infinity with n. So it's not immediately clear what the average term size is. But we're going to have a look at a standard trick which goes back several hundred years. Works really well. Whenever you have a function that's either increasing or decreasing, you can do this. So you can also use this trick for the sum 1 plus a half plus a third plus dot 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 plus 1 over n. In that case you have a decreasing function. Here we have an increasing function. I'm going to draw like this. And we have a graph. What I'm going to do now is interpret this sum in terms of areas of rectangles. It's kind of nice. This is uh, 1, this is 2, etc. And here we have, let's say, n. Right, and we might need n plus 1 at the end. I'm going to go up to the curve. And of course, you can see what the heights are because they're just these points are just lying on the curve. And then I'm going to draw in some rectangles. This one the height's zero, so it's not a very interesting rectangle. Then we go up here. And we're going to go all the way along. Here's n minus 1. Got a little rectangle like that. Okay, and we can do one more. Now, because the function is increasing, these rectangles here always lie underneath the graph. So the sum of the areas under these rectangles is less than the area under the curve. Now, what is the sum of the rectangles? Well, each of them has base 1 and it has a height equal to the function value at the left-hand end. So, the sum of areas of the rectangles, it equals just the sum of the heights, because the bases are all equal to 1. And what is the sum of the heights? Log of 1, log of 2, log of 3, up to log of n. And that's what we're trying to calculate. So that's good. On the other hand, the area under the curve well, that's given by an integral it's the integral from 1 to n plus 1 of log of x dx. 
So we have got an upper bound for the sum that we want in terms of this integral. We can also use the same idea to get a lower bound. So how do we do that? Well, we extend out the rectangles. Instead of the height being the function value at the left end point there, it's the value at the right end point. Okay, so we go all the way along there, and this final one here is going to be the value there. So what is the sum of the areas of the pink rectangles, the upper rectangles, It's this height here, which is log of 2 times 1, plus log of 3 times 1, etc. The log of n rectangle corresponds to that one there. So we get log of 2 plus dot 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 plus log of n. But of course, log of 1 is 0, so I can add that in if I like. I do that because I want to get the same sum we had before. Now the area under the curve, it's slightly different because instead of going up to here, we're going to go to here. So now we have that. So we have the sum that we want squashed between two integrals. And now it's simply a matter of evaluating those integrals and seeing what the answer is. So we know that the sum log of k, k equals 1 to n, it's no more than the integral from 1 to n plus 1 of log of x dx and it's greater than or equal to, in fact, we don't have equality here because of the picture we saw before. There's definitely some gaps in the approximation there. But basically that's what we have. Now this we can integrate. So it depends how much you remember about that. But basically we multiply by one and we integrate by parts. So you can easily check that that is, in fact, what you want. That's less than or equal to our sum. Call that thing S, so I don't have to write it down again. And that's less than or equal to the same antiderivative here. But now I have n plus 1 instead of n. If I evaluate at the top, I get n times the log of n. And then I get a minus n. Then I get a 0 at the bottom and a plus 1. So that's less than or equal to s. On the other hand, I get the same thing here with n plus 1. So we're almost done. We just want to see how big S is for large N. It's pretty clear it's squashed between N log N and something that's very close to N log N. And in fact, you might as well just apply the limit rule for asymptotics. We squash between there. We can divide by N log N. Now what's the limit of this one? as n goes to infinity? Well, you get a 1 here, and then you get minus some stuff involving n with an n log n on the bottom. It looks like at most constant over log n. So it goes to 0, this other term. And that's a 1. So it, the limit is 1 as n goes to infinity. The limit here, for the same reason exactly, is also 1. 
you might want to do a little bit more work here, but basically this ratio is approaching 1, if n goes to infinity, this thing goes to 0, so you get 1. Leave you to think about that a little bit if you need to. Intuitively, these two things, this ratio is very close to 1 as n gets very large. So therefore, this must approach 1. So the long and the short of that is that our original log of n factorial is of the same exact order of growth as n log n. Incidentally, we could have done part of that last calculation more efficiently if we knew the answer, because the log of n factorial, if we already are guessing that n log n is what we're looking for, and we have this lower bound, so we do the integral approximation, we just want to get an upper bound, and we don't care about constants, we just want to know whether it's the right general order of growth, then this is equal to the log of 1 times 2 up to n. It's certainly less than or equal to the log of a larger number, which is n times n up to n. And there are n factors here. And so this is the log of n to the n. But that's equal to n log n. So we could see this without doing the integral approximation. But to get the other direction, the greater than or equal to part, there we did need to do some extra work.